the limitations you have, and the negative things that you internalize are given to you by the world. The things that empower you, the possibilities, come from within. Hi, I'm Linda watson Call. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Dragonfly Soup. Do you or did you ever play marbles? I did. You know, there were plain marbles and brightly colored marbles, cat's eyes, and a lot of others. Everyone had their favorites. And, of course, we would try to knock them out of the ring so that we could keep the ones we liked best until at least the next game. The more players we had, the bigger the ring we would make. Too many marbles in a small place meant that more marbles got knocked out every time, and that took away the skill of being able to knock out the marble you wanted. As I grew older, I stopped playing marbles, probably because most of my friends stopped too. You know, even though on the surface marbles appears to be a childlike game, in actuality, it isn't. You see, the players set a goal, devise a strategy, and achieves or doesn't achieve that goal. Strategies get revised, and everyone tries again. Sometimes you get the marble that you wanted. Other times, even though you knock a marble out, it's not the right one. And although you get another turn, this marble was a disappointment. As an adult, I see the game of marbles more as a game of life, with each marble representing an event, good or bad that happened to us. And just like the game of marbles, these events can pop up in our mind, sometimes triggered by a situation we're in, and other times for no apparent reason. And just like marbles, these events color our feelings. The white, blue, yellow, green ones are good events. The black marbles are the things we would rather not think about. They bring up emotions we really don't want to deal with. And sometimes we're clueless as to what triggered the emotion or even what happened in our past to make this emotion feel so real. Now, when my husband passed away several years ago, every time I heard a siren from an EMS vehicle, I would be flooded with the emotions of loss and grieving. Sirens became my black marble. I completely understood why I was reacting that way and knew that in time, I would no longer react that strongly or emotionally to sirens. As they say, time heals. But sometimes, especially if the source of the black marble isn't known or understood, no amount of time will change those feelings. One of the saddest things that I have seen is when a very talented person who has some wonderful dream to accomplish keeps falling short. You might say this person is sabotaging his or her success. But why? Now, I'm not a psychologist or a psychotherapist, but as a teacher and a parent, I can tell you that most of the time, the sabotage doesn't come from the person, but from someone, someone of authority from that person's past. Perhaps a trusted relative tells a child that art is not a worthwhile career. This child is now an adult working at a job that just isn't fulfilling and has the hobby of painting. But this person always stops before the final strokes are placed on the canvas. Why? Because in that person's mind, a voice keeps saying that art is not a worthwhile career. If this person finished the piece, and heaven forbid it sold, or people saw the work and asked for more, then this person might start a career as an artist. But that voice will keep saying it's not a worthwhile career. I had a friend who, when something good came her way, would say, this is great, but I don't deserve something like this. I thought she was just being humble. Then I come to find out she came from a poor family. One year, when she was quite young, someone gave her a new pair of shoes. Up until now, she only wore hand-me-downs. She was excited and wore her new shoes all the time, even though her parents had told her she should only wear them to church 
and on special occasions. Do I need to tell you what happened? She ruined those shoes. And from that time on, she was constantly reminded by adults in her family of that incident and that she didn't deserve anything nice. One of our greatest motivational speakers today, Les Brown, was born in poverty and was labeled educable mentally retarded in the fifth grade. Because this was told to him by a teacher, by the education system, he believed it. He didn't do anything to change his path. They said he was mentally slow, so he was slow. In high school, he would fantasize about speaking in front of thousands of people. But when his speech and drama teacher asked him to perform, Les told him he couldn't because he was educable, mentally retarded. His teacher became irate and responded to Les saying, Do not ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And those words lifted and removed that label from Les Brown forever. Les believes that the limitations you have, the negative things that you internalize, are given to you by the world. The things that empower you, the possibilities, come from within. At that moment, his black marble was shattered. For some of us, we may have a hero or an angel that will say the right words at the right time and free us from our black marble. But the chances of that happening to the rest of us are very slim. We need to look within ourselves to realize that we have the ability, the power, to become the person we want to be. We can reach our goals and accomplish what others may say are impossible. Piece of cake, right? Not really. What we really need to do is recognize the black marble or marbles that's holding us back. The black marble pops up when we least expect it, but we don't let it set us back every time. Instead, we acknowledge it. We thank it for reminding us of our possible shortcoming and then dismiss it. Your internal conversation could go like this. You are thinking, this is the best picture that I've ever created. It's better than anything I've done before. That black marble pops up and says, art is not a worthwhile career, so don't bother finishing it. You say, thank you for your thought, but I will continue and complete this work. Then you focus on the painting and leave that thought behind. Now, at first, you might get into longer conversations with that black marble but eventually it won't bother showing up again. After you dismiss your black marble, replace it with other colored marbles. Put a red one in its place by saying, I love what I do, others appreciate my work. Or select a green marble with the words, I earn enough by doing what I love. I feel fulfilled by doing this work. Or select a beautiful gold yellow marble with the claim, this painting is my best work ever. I am an accomplished artist. Select your own color and affirmation. Say it to yourself and say it to that black marble. Then watch your dream come true. Our past does not create our future. What other people say is their opinion. We, you, all of us have the power within us to do or be whatever we envision ourselves doing. All we need to do is believe in ourselves, in the power within, and dismiss those black marbles whenever they appear. You know, we all have black marbles that pop up from time to time, whether we want to admit it or not. Why don't you share with me, either in the comments or in a private message, how you plan to deal with these marbles as you continue on your path to success. And be sure to click like for this week's episode. While you're at it, share it with your friends. And I'll see you next week, right here on Dragonfly Soup. Here's to our transformation and our best year ever.